Hi, I'm Nate Seberg, and this is One Day Ahead. This video is part of my larger To Kill Me Mockingbird series, complete with chapter-by-chapter -chapter summaries, in-depth analysis, and comprehensive teaching unit. You can find all of that at onedayahead.com. Today we are going to talk big picture about teaching this text. If you are looking for a play-by-play, day-level run-through of the entire unit, that is a different video in this playlist. This one is from 10,000 feet, and it is my hard-won knowledge having taught this in a couple of contexts for years. So where I've taught, we are doing this text right around 8th grade, 8, 9, 10. That is the sweet spot for To Kill a Mockingbird. And the first thing I want to discuss and the first thing you should consider is that this book is controversial and increasingly so. It's controversial for two reasons. The first has to do with the specific language in the book. The N-word is absolutely everywhere. Its presence in the mouths of white characters is a flashpoint in today's culture. I have a whole standalone video on how I approach that. However, you need to check with your district or administration or somebody to see if there is a standalone policy for how the presence of this word is handled in classrooms in your district or teaching situation. If a policy doesn't exist, it is time to create one that isn't only yours. Because if something goes off the rails here, the trust you've built, the conversations you've had, the context, the nuance, and your good intentions, they are not going to matter at all. You need to find or make a policy. Get it cleared, be specific, get whoever is above you to sign off on it in writing because you need to protect yourself here. For more on that, check out the Approaching the N-Word video in this playlist. The next thing you got to do is you need to reach out to parents well in advance and let them know that you are going to tackle this text. There are plenty of links you can send along of thoughtful people giving thoughtful perspectives on how to approach this text in a classroom setting. You want to do this not only because it's a decent thing to do, but also because it is going to let you know who has real concerns that need to be addressed beforehand. So that's the first reason this book is controversial. The second, which is more nuanced, has to do with the positioning of Atticus as the white savior. And that is something I discuss in depth in the analysis section of chapters 12 through 13. Basically, the argument goes like this. If you took only what's on the page in this book, you would think that racism in the American South is a problem that exists as a moral battle between only the white characters. Those who are bad are antagonists in this book. They're poor, ignorant, mean, racist, and white, while our protagonists are financially stable, educated, big-hearted, moral, and also white. The black characters in this book are rendered super one-dimensionally. We don't, we don't get to hear from them. We don't hear their pain, frustration, or anger. The black characters have no agency at all. They are overwhelmingly portrayed as simple-hearted, long-suffering, resilient, docile, and quietly grateful to the Finches. That's not great. And I do have more thoughts on this, but I think largely at its core, this is a super valid criticism. I still do teach this book because I think its virtues are great, and I would encourage you to use this white savior debate as an opportunity. Make it one of the main touchstones of your class conversations. Start that talk right after the trial, when the whole balcony stands up for Atticus, and right after the black citizens deliver mounds of food to the Finch's door. The white saviorness of Mockingbird is a really thorny, complicated debate, and discussing this criticism's merits while reading the book serves to bring some of these themes closer to student lives. This is a book that's easy to keep at arm's distance, but the fact is, y'all are, you're reading this book in the context of a school, and maybe you shouldn't be, and that's something everyone can immediately understand and, over time, form their own opinion on. Finally, before you select this book, I would ask you to step back and consider, like, what other texts students will read throughout the year and throughout their high school experience, because the fact is, if they are only gonna get one book, that includes themes of racism in America, then this really shouldn't be that one. And while we're on the topic of class discussions, there is something pretty foundational that I do that didn't make the teaching unit, and that is the whole idea of what uh, and who are mockingbirds. Like, what's with the title? So this idea is for sure in the analysis videos which I made, I, most prominently in chapters 18 through 19, but when I teach this book, I don't make this an assignment. I let it live in our class discussion, small group and large. This is a conversation you're gonna start right around chapter eight because that is the first time it's ever mentioned in the book. But it's something you get to bring up again and again as we meet Tom and Mayella and we consider Scout and obviously learn the backstory of Boo. And that's all I have. Between this video, the summary and analysis series, and the complete 119-page teaching unit, you are all set to tackle this amazing text. I wish you luck. Use what I do, uh, change it, modify it, make it work for you. We'll see you next time on One Day Ahead.